What's going on everyone? This is Kevin Breeze here, coming at you with my first impressions and hands-on video of the new Samsung Galaxy J2 for Metro by T-Mobile, which used to be called Metro PCS. Now the MSRP for this device is $149, but if you're new to Metro by T-Mobile, then you can actually get this device for free, and all you have to pay is for your plan, the tax, and the activation fee. So there's a variety of different plans available, but typically people go with the $40 a month plan. Now you have to pay the activation fee, which is typically $15, and some tax. So technically, you can walk out of your Metro by T-Mobile store with this device in hand for a little bit more than $65, which is an amazing deal. Of course, to continue service after your first month, you're going to have to continue paying for your plan, and you can adjust your plan to a better plan or a lower plan. The lowest tiered plan at the moment for Metro by T-Mobile is $30 a month. And let me know down in the comments if you'd like me to do a video where I break down the various plans for Metro and kind of give you my opinion on the best one for you. So clearly, Metro by T-Mobile is positioning this device as an entry-level device considering that you can get it for free. Now if you go online and search up Samsung Galaxy J2, you'll see that there's a variety of different phones that have come out over the years with the same name. Now that's definitely kind of confusing, so just make sure that you are looking at the specific Samsung Galaxy J2 for Metro by T-Mobile so that you're not accidentally reading information on the wrong device. So this device features a 5-inch display coming in at 540 by 960 pixels. So it's actually below 720p, which is a little bit of a disappointment, but looking at the display here, it's actually really clear and looks good. So I'm not really concerned about the display not being good. Of course, if it was 1080p or even 720p at the very least, it would be an improvement over what we have here. But I don't think that the display is going to be an issue when using this device because the screen itself is pretty small at 5 inches. Now if this device had a larger display at like 6 inches or 6.5 inches and we had that sub 720p resolution, then you'd definitely be seeing a lot of pixelation here. But considering that the display is a bit smaller on this device, it actually still looks pretty sharp. Now of course there's no notch here at the top and the bezels on the top and bottom are pretty large. Down at the bottom here, below the on-screen buttons, we do have the Samsung logo, but there's no actual Metro by T-Mobile branding anywhere on the device. Now that's something that Metro usually does with all of their devices, which is pretty cool. And it's a little bit different from other prepaid carriers like Cricket and Boost, where they always have their logo on the actual hardware itself. So this design here definitely isn't revolutionary by any means, but at the same time it's not ugly. The aspect ratio of this display is 16 by 9, which has kind of been the standard for quite a while now. Now some of the newer devices coming out have taller displays, so this doesn't have that, but at least when you're watching 16 by 9 video, which we'll be doing a demonstration of that in a little bit, you're not going to have any black bars anywhere, and you don't have to crop in at all. Another bonus with this display is that it features Corning Gorilla Glass, which means that the display on here is a bit more durable than your typical budget handset display. Now up top here, we do have a 5 megapixel front-facing camera, and we have the earpiece. We also have a light sensor here, which means that the sensor can determine how bright the display itself needs to be based on the lighting conditions surrounding you. Now internally here, we have 16 gigabytes of storage, with 9 gigabytes of that storage being available to users. The other 7 gigabytes is utilized by the operating system and the bloatware that comes with the Samsung Galaxy J2. Now if 9 gigabytes of user available storage is not good enough for you, you can always add an SD card to the device, up to 400 gigabytes. Also under the hood, we have 2 gigabytes of RAM, which is not great, but not horrible either and it has a 1.4 gigahertz quad core processor. Now, when I was doing my research for this video, I couldn't find anywhere what that specific processor is. So if you happen to know that information, I'd love for you to put it down in the comment section below. But Samsung doesn't say on their website, Metro doesn't say it on their website either, and I just couldn't find it anywhere. But the fact that this is a quad core processor at this price point is pretty good in itself. Now taking a look at the backside of the device, we have a rear facing camera, we have the LED flash, we have the speaker and Samsung logo, and that's it. Now, this is a plastic back, which normally would be considered kind of a downgrade, but I actually really like this kind of glossy material here on the back. I think it looks really sharp and almost looks kind of premium. It does pick up scratches pretty easily and does absorb grease as well, but I still think it looks pretty sharp. 
Another thing too with this rear facing camera is that video recording is capped out at 1080p at 30 frames per second, but considering that this is a lower end device with a lower end processor, I'm not shocked at that limitation. You're also not going to get portrait mode with this device and there's no wireless charging. And in addition to that, there's no fingerprint sensors. So in order to unlock this device, you are limited to using a passcode. Taking a closer look at the hardware here, on the bottom of the device, we have the micro USB port, the microphone, and the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Up top, we have the noise canceling microphone. On the left side, we have the volume rockers. And on the right side, we have the power button. Removing the battery is really easy too. There's a little cutout here that you can just stick your finger into and the back comes off really quickly and easily. That's a big pet peeve of mine with some different smartphones out there is that it's really hard to remove the rear paneling, but this is really easy with the Galaxy J2. So you can see here we have the battery coming in at 2600 milliamp hours. And then if you remove the battery, then you have access to the SIM card and access to the slot for the micro SD card if you choose to put that in. So pretty simple here on the back side. Definitely like that there is a removable battery because down the road, if you want to replace it with a fresh battery, you can do that. Or if you're on a long trip or something, you can buy multiple batteries and swap them out throughout your trip and you don't have to worry about finding an outlet anywhere. Now the Samsung Galaxy J2 features a 2,600 milliamp hour internal battery, which isn't too bad. Of course, it's not the greatest out there. Recently, I've been testing out a lot of different devices with 4,000 milliamp hour internal batteries, but at 2,600 milliamp hours, you're not gonna have a big issue with the actual battery life itself. It's gonna easily last you through an entire day. And the cool thing too is that this battery is actually removable. So if for some reason you have this phone for a long period of time and the battery starts to get kind of stale and doesn't hold its charge as well, you can easily buy another battery and swap out the old one for the new one. This device features Android 8.1 Oreo and I'm not sure when or if it will be updated to Pi. We'll have to see down the road if that even happens. If I had to guess, it probably won't be updated to Pi. But Oreo is still a good version of Android, and even if this device doesn't receive any updates, I think you'll be able to pretty much do all the different functions that you'd want to do with Oreo for at least several years now. Let's take a look at the various bloatware that's installed onto this device. Now when I first started this up, instantly a bunch of different applications started downloading. Now that's always a fear of mine to see that with new devices that I get because I don't like bloatware. I like it when I have the option, or at least I can choose on my own, what applications I want to pre-install. But right out of the box, a bunch of stuff started downloading here on the device. So we're just going to swipe up here and take a look at the different applications that are on the device by default. So you can see here we have a Google folder. And in this folder, we have Google, Chrome, Gmail, Maps, YouTube, Drive, Duo, Photos, and Google One. Then we have a Metro by T-Mobile folder. And we have all kinds of different Metro apps. So we have the App Store, Device Unlock, Lookout. Metro Zone, My Metro, Name ID, and Mobile Hotspot. Then we have a Samsung folder, and in the Samsung folder we have Galaxy Apps, My Files, Samsung Health, and Samsung Notes. We have the Calendar, Camera, Clock, Contacts, Email, Gallery, Internet, Messages, Phone, Play Music, Play Store, Settings, Play Movies and TV, and Samsung Plus. So actually, to be honest, the amount of bloatware on this device isn't as bad as I kind of thought it was going to be but I would have preferred to see maybe less Samsung applications on here and just kind of sticking to the default Google applications. For example, you can see that we have Google Chrome on here, but we also have Samsung's internet browser. So it's kind of redundant. Most people I'd imagine would just want to go with Chrome. They don't need to use Samsung's browser. So that's just an example of having duplicate applications on here that aren't really necessary. But again, not a huge deal. I mean, it could be worse. Overall, the software on this device has been heavily modified in kind of Samsung's mold of Android that they like to include on different devices. So I kind of wish they would have just stuck with stock Android here, but it is what it is. So if that's something that bothers you, you might want to consider looking at other options. But if you don't mind kind of Samsung's experience that they love to tout, then this might be a good device for you. We have a couple of interesting features here with the phone application. So the first one is video calling. So you can do video calling with other people using this phone dialer application that comes by default. In addition to that, you can also do Wi-Fi calling. So depending on the plan that you have, that's either free or paid. But if maybe for some reason where you are doesn't have great Metro by T-Mobile reception, then you can use Wi-Fi to complete that call. 
which is always a great perk to have. Let's check out the camera here and see what options we have. Now, one of the great things that I've noticed with Samsung with some of their budget devices is that they still have pretty decent cameras on them. And it looks like this camera picks up a lot of light, which is a great thing to see. It looks like it is a little blurry and kind of pixelated, but it still looks pretty decent at the same time, especially considering that this device only features a $149 MSRP, and you can pretty much get this for free if you buy it through Metro. So we have a panorama mode here, we have a pro mode, we have beauty mode, auto, stickers, continuous shot, pretty cool. Let's go back to auto. We have a bunch of different settings here as well, so you can choose your picture size, your video size, so you can lower that to lower resolutions here for the video size if you want to for whatever reason. There's a timer, there's an HDR mode, and you also have the same settings for the front-facing camera. Pretty cool to see that the front-facing camera can record video in 1080p as well. That's something that we don't always see with different smartphones out there. You can also use the volume key to take pictures, another great bonus. It looks like there's a bunch of different camera settings here. So awesome to see. I mean, that's one of the perks that I guess Samsung brings along by adding their additional software on top of stock Android is that you do get different options here for the camera. You can also take photos with a bunch of different filters here, which is an interesting feature to see. Now let's record a quick video here. And we'll see how that plays back. All right, pretty cool. I'm actually gonna play a YouTube video next so we can see how the audio sounds on this device. So go over to YouTube. Portable smartphone with premium specs and performance? If so, then I think the Umidigi F1 is the smartphone for you, so keep watching. This version of the Umidigi F1 is the factory unlocked GSM version, which sells for $219.99. You can find an Amazon link to this exact version of the phone in the video description. The device features 4G LTE connectivity, a MediaTek Helio piece. All right, that was kind of an interesting experience there with kind of using the speakers in this device for the first time. So the speakers are definitely pretty tinny when the device is cranked up at full volume. Kind of unfortunate to see, but at the same time, I mean, it could be worse, I suppose. Another limitation, which makes sense because this display is lower than 720p, is that YouTube playback on the device is maxed out at 480p. So that's another kind of a downgrade there. But it's cool to see that at least we have some pretty good performance here, scrolling through the YouTube app and stuff. So, I mean, the video is also quick to play back, so that was good to see as well. So overall, I think if you're a casual video watcher, this device is definitely fine for that. Another thing too is that you might want to consider using headphones if you're going to be watching videos on this device, considering how the speakers aren't really the best here. And there is a headphone jack, of course, on the bottom, so that can suit your needs. All right, so this concludes my first impressions and hands-on video of the Samsung Galaxy J2 for Metro by T-Mobile. If you enjoyed this video, definitely give me a thumbs up and sub to the channel. Let me know down below if you have any other questions and if you have any specific requests that you'd like me to do about this device and let me know what other devices you'd like me to cover on the channel in the future. But this is Kevin Breeze here. Thanks so much for watching. Remember, life's a breeze and I will see you in the next video.